see you back in the URA. Bye from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And this is a review of Shakedown, Return of the Sontarans. I don't know where they're returning from. Uh, 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 they return from the lack of being on TV. And they weren't on TV because Doctor Who wasn't on TV. So I guess that's where they're returning from. So this is a uh, direct-to-video basically fan uh, fan film made in uh, 95 and I watched it because I watched um, Downtime uh, something from I think it was from 96 they, uh, the sequel to Web of Fear I watched Web of Fear recently when the uh, Blu-ray came out I absolutely adored it really absolutely absolutely adored it uh, uh, so uh, and it wasn't very good <laughs> No, no, uh, 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 Web of Fear was very good, but uh, Downtime wasn't very good. I, listen, I got a lot of affection for it, but it was just like, it just wasn't, it wasn't, go check out my review, it just wasn't very, very good, which uh, I remember really, really liking it. So I was like, are all these productions from the time when we were starved for Doctor Who, are they all equally as ropey? So I thought, let's go look at Downtime, uh, Shakedown, I think it's one, one of the first ones, let's go look at that. Because uh, uh, I remember liking that too, and boy! It was great. It was absolutely great. This is a strong, strong recommend. Uh, uh, if they ever remaster it and re-release it, I can't find it anywhere for for anybody for you to buy. But uh, uh, whoever owns this, for the love of God, I mean, you you must have the original footage. Remaster, re-release, new special effect. This, this is gold. This is absolute gold. This is one of the best uh, uh, Sontaran stories I've ever seen. It really is. I'm, I, I was I was surprised at how much I liked it. I really was because I thought, yeah, I got to be a bit forgiving. Uh, no, it's great. It's absolutely great. Fine. So I'm getting the review in a minute. Uh, hit, click the like button if you if you will be so good. Uh, uh, click the share button uh, if you will be so uh, uh, even so good. <laughs> That's one. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. I would like to get. My my subscribe, uh, subscribe, uh, subscribers up to what am I even up to now? Thirty one hundred, thirty two hundred. I know whatever, whatever the next plateau is. I would like that if you could do that, that'd be really, really great. Thank you very much. I know YouTube does work very, very hard against us, uh, uh, but never mind. <laughs> Let's just click, click the subscribe button. Right? Like, share, subscribe. If you are subscribed, please make sure you're not there. Uh, you're still subscribed, uh, and if you're not subscribed, if you can consider doing it. Also, I don't even have the thing in front of me. Where is this? Uh, uh, normally, this is where I plug my uh, my, my Indiegogo. There we go, because. Uh, it's basically done at this point. It's basically done. Uh, the order, the, there we go. The order is into the printer. Uh, I don't know about the American orders yet. I'm just waiting for them to tell me uh, 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 if they're going to be printing in the UK or printing in the US. Whole story, inflation, stagnation. In, it was in, what's it called again? Uh, uh, stagflation. I think they're calling it stagflation, where the economy is both stagnating and inflating simultaneously. That's not good. That can't be good. Anyway, so that's what I'm waiting to find out. Two awesome graphic novels. Go check them out. We've got Biblical, Bible Stories, Ace of Crazy, Rational Growth, 240, uh, uh, 240 pages long. Uh, uh, all of them good. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone's a winner, right? All 200. Actually, there's one page I really don't like. Okay. If, you, if anybody can work out, I redrew it three times. And I'm like, I, this is the best I can do it. Okay. The, if you can work out what that one page is that I'm really not happy with, uh, 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 you get no prize. <laughs> Just tell me. Uh, uh, and also, go check out this one. It's uh, the Imperium. I didn't draw it for this one. So, uh, look, I'm telling you. It, in terms of making comics, it's so much easier writing comics than it is drawing comics, right? Uh, so I had the fabulous Dominic Racho uh, 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 do the artwork on this. He I did all the artwork for the, uh, all the extras. James Bond, Doctor Who, Emma Pill, The Black Slap from 2001, and Monkey in a Space Who. All together in one awesome super group. Then you get a bunch of extras, you get uh, posters, you get for the male gaze cards. You all go Listen, I plug every freaking video uh, 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 you should know about now in the video notes. Go check it out if you, if that's, if it's your bag, man. If that's your bag, and listen, if that's not your bag, I I, I don't know what is. It's that, again, best I can do for you. Best I can do for you. Fine. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about uh, Shakedown, the Return of the Sontaran. So I I think this probably had. My guess is a lower budget than downtime, uh, and it's really, again, really, really came together nicely. Directed by Kevin Davis. Uh, Kevin Davis used to be the name in fan directing. He did more than 30 years in the TARDIS. Uh, uh, well, he did 30 years in the TARDIS, then they did more than 30 years in the TARDIS, which was like a much better version of it. Uh, he also did the, the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy documentary on that, Blu-ray. Uh, and, and he made the documentaries for the Blake 7 DVD box, box set. But they never released them. I got the first... If anybody wants to, let me know. I have the first three that somebody put on uh, uh, on YouTube. I downloaded them <laughs> pretty quickly. Uh, uh, so, uh, first thing, watching this, 
How did Kevin Davis not have a bigger career? It's an absolute mystery. The competence shown in this and his other work is uh, uh, is high, right? It's, a, it's very, very, very competent. I put together a really, really, a really good package. So the reason I think this works, whereas a downtime really didn't, is this isn't trying to be Doctor Who. This is something different set in its own, no, it's different set, uh, set in the world of Doctor Who, but trying to be its own thing. It's not trying to mimic the uh, uh, the structure and the feeling of Doctor Who. Uh, and and if you don't have Doctor Who in it, it does kind of make it hard to uh, uh, to, to mim uh, mimic that structure. Weirdly enough, uh, they had a lot of people who were in Blake Seven and Doctor Who playing different roles in it. So, uh, but you just kind of like see past that because it is so you know very very different to uh, to the characters they they played before. So it stars uh, who, who was in it. Uh, was it Jan Chapel who uh, who played Callie from Blake Seven as the captain of this. Uh, of the tiger moth, this um, was it this, this yacht, the, this yacht that you you put out solar sails and you and you and you race it essentially, right? That that that's essentially what it is. Um, it's all shot on location and and much the better for it as well at uh, HMS Belfast, I believe, right? It, it, yeah, it's all uh, all shot there. So she she's basically the captain of this uh, you know of this yacht and. Uh, um, the crew are a bunch of rich people who paid for it. So they're all kind of like pampered losers, essentially, right? Uh, apart from Brian, Brian Croucher, who is a mysterious uh, 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 self-made man, Brian, Brian Croucher, uh, famous for being this, the, the second Travis. I'm quite looking forward to... There, there's a uh, big Finnish uh, uh, audio coming out this month, the Clone Masters, which had both Travises in it. So I'm really, I'm really, you know, really you know, kind of psyched for that. Uh, Caroline Ford is in it, is playing a, uh, a, it's like a very diva-ish esque uh, character, Zorel. She sort of pulls it off, right? Sort of pulls it off. Uh, more so than Sophie Aldred, who plays uh, a princess, a space princess, or, so, or somebody very high up in a government, or so, a daughter of someone. Uh, um, basically, it's Sophie Aldred. <laughs> you know, it's like, you can't really get beyond. Like, I, I can convince myself everybody is different people. I can't really get beyond Sophie Aldred. She just looks and sounds exactly like Sophie Aldred. She's not really playing to type. Uh, um, probably one of the weakest things of the of this production, but she's pretty good. Production's good. Michael Wisher is fantastic in it, uh, playing the ship's en uh, engineer. But the standout uh, of these are the Sontarans. The stars are fantastic. Firstly, the Sontaran design, best I've ever seen. Right, far superior to the uh, 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 to when they came back in 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 the new series. Absolutely the best I've ever seen. Each Sontaran has a distinct personality. Uh, and it, again, just really, really comes together. I love the design of these Sontarans. I, they, they, for me, they're, they're, they're the best I've ever seen. For me, I think they're just like the the ultimate so, uh, Sontarans. I, why, again, why they did, 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 didn't did just go with these designs when, when they brought them back is beyond me. Because the designs they have, I, I'm looking at my action figures and going, damn, that's just nowhere near as good. <laughs> I'm looking at my action figures sometimes. Like, that's just nowhere near as good. I, 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 I will try and put some pictures of them uh, in, you know, on the thumbnail. Because they are they are absolutely uh, absolutely excellent. The story holds together very well. It's a simple story. They expanded it for a uh, what was it one of the uh, New Adventures range. Uh, and I believe they, they reprinted it in 2014. So if you can get hands on it, it's pretty darn good. So the basic plot is you've got a bunch of, a bunch of rich people on, uh, you know, on this uh, on this yacht, on this on this space yacht. Um, and again, it needs a remastering. It needs new special effects desperately. And yeah, the it, it's, it's such a shame because they made it at the, what 95. Ten years later, even just ten years later, they you would have had really decent special effects, really decent CGI of like rippling uh, solar sails as it goes through space. And uh, uh, as it is, you get a kind of a bunch of wonky uh, um, model shots. One or two of them actually work quite well. Most of them don't. Most of them really don't. Uh, and the way the the uh, the rich people control the yacht is by... So this was so ahead of the game. About a good, about a good five years ahead of the game. This was before The Matrix. Um, it's the it's all uh, done in like cyberspace of virtual reality. They they basically put on sunglasses and they do this with their hands, and then they, you you see them like like pulling ropes and stuff in 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 like a virtual manner. Um, 
again, again, it just needs a real good remaster. But okay, so the main the main bit of plot is there's a Sontaran uh, war wheel, and they're chasing a root on a uh, uh, a root on that's escaped from somewhere, and they and so I think they're trying to chase out everything that left this planet recent, recently because they're trying to find this root on spy that has all their battle plans on. And that's why they board and take over uh, uh, the uh, the Tiger Moth. So after the, the that that initial se uh, section is when they when they when they come come into the ship and they board it. They they shoot everybody to subdue them. Uh, and it's a great action scene. And the Suntarans, they again they're better than in the current series. They're moving fast. They're deadly. They're scary. It really works. I think another thing that makes this thing really really work well is they did it widescreen. Right? Did it wide now. With downtime, I, I recommended watching it on your phone. I think I'm going to have the same recommendation for this, even though I watched it on my big screen. The copy I had is pretty uh, pre HD, right? So it was even so, the quality of the story carried me through. So they take it over, and it's basically a cat and map mouse game where they're trying to find the root and spy and the root and spy is slowly but surely going through the crew uh taking them over as uh um uh was it this uh Sontaran commander steg who's played by toby aspin uh i think he came back as a uh a, a Sontaran in a future um uh, directed uh, video production. I was, I was going to say director DVD. No, this is director video, baby. Director video production uh, as like a very uh, intelligent, calculating, and honourable Sontaran who you get to care about, right? You get to care about as it goes on. His second in command is uh, Lieutenant Vaughan, who's a moron, but it's great. Okay, he's got this great scar going across his top, uh, top of his head. Gives him dimension. Gives him character. Uh, I can't remember if I said this was written by Terence Sticks, but it's really. One of his like absolute best scripts. It it really it's just really really it's just really fantastic. Uh, who else is in this? Anything else I can think to say about it? Uh, look, if you can find a copy, it's really really worth it. I think it's it, it's it's totally worth. It's about an hour long. I remember when they uh, uh, when they premiered it. It was in three twenty minute episodes, and so you do get like a scene, you know, break at you know, every tw twenty minutes. Uh, generally speaking, though, love it, love it. It's got very, they, yeah. Here's the thing: they go for an alien vibe with it, so it doesn't feel like Doctor. It feels like they're trying to do like a big budget alien movie. Uh, uh, <laughs> and what it comes out as more is there's uh, uh, this uh, uh, live action alien ride uh, uh, thing in the Trocadero in London. Which I believe uh, it, 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 Trocadero is not there anymore, which it, it blows my mind. Every time I say this, it just blows my mind. Trocadero is not there. You said this great restaurant I went there as well. This uh, uh, like this music themed restaurant, good food. Anyway, um, uh, and, and so it kind of looked like that. It kind of like it looks like Aliens on the Cheap, and it's fine. It's totally fine. So that's basically what it is. Aliens on the Cheap with uh, uh, Doctor Who and um, Blake Seven actors. Uh, uh, and Sontarans as monsters uh, uh, with with dated special effects, and and amazingly, it's still a recommend, right? It's absolutely still a recommend. So much fun, so much fun, so much confidence. So yeah, that's really the thing. There's a lot of confidence going through the whole thing, and it just holds together well. Uh, so yeah, for me, absolute strong recommend. I'm really glad I dipped my toe back back in this. Uh, what's next? Uh, uh, maybe maybe, maybe uh, uh, mind game. Maybe the the autumn trilogy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, this is I'm going to be uh, doing a deep dive on this whole seam of '90s Doctor Who spin-offs that you know pretty much forgotten nowadays. And again, my, I'm going to close with an appeal. Whoever owns this, right? Whoever owns Tropicana Productions. I think that's the uh, 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 in Levine. Uh, whoever owns this. Please remaster it, re-release it. It's really good. It's really good. It's really worth your time uh, and, and really worth your money if you can find it. <laughs> there you go. My name's Ian Beck, and you are my from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah.